Okay, so this video is looking at a concept that we call phenotypic expression. What that really means is it's about the expression of genes, and that means when a gene is turned into a protein and expressed, um, and how that affects the phenotype of the cell and the organism. So phenotypic expression of genes depends on factors controlling transcription and translation because that's part of protein synthesis. Um, and these are controlled by uh, products of other genes and the environment. By expressing different genes, that's how cells differentiate and become specialised as part of the growth and development of an organism. So we need to first of all understand genotype and phenotype. So the genotype is the genetic side of uh, this equation and looks at the um, uh, genes and versions of the genes, alleles that are uh, expressed or available within that organism. And the phenotype is uh, then the traits, the physical outcomes that we can see from that. So uh, a good example of the difference between them here is this is representing a chromosome in a flower and a sequence of DNA in there. So that's the genotype and that's set at fertilization, your genotype is set, um, but your phenotype can vary. But the genotype uh, is at the gene level. Obviously, we know that genes lead to the production of proteins, and proteins do things in cells. So in this instance, the protein is making that purple pigment that leads to being a purple flower. So genes for the color are the genotype. The actual color seen uh, is the phenotype. Uh, this is also another example of this is through blood types. So here's different blood types. Here are our um, phenotypes of blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. And here are the genotypes. So you have a, a place in your DNA that the locus is called I. Um, at this locus I, you can have different alleles, different versions of that gene. So it might be the A version, the O version, the B version. If your genotype is to have an A and an O version like this, or an A and an A version like this, your phenotype is blood type A. If you have a B and an O, or a B and a B, your phenotype is blood type B. A and a B leads to AB, and an O and an O leads to blood type O. What that actually means is it's about the proteins that are on the surface of your blood cells, um, and that leads to different uh, antibodies in your blood. So the genotype is about which genes you have and they produce proteins, and the proteins there depend, uh, determine your blood type, and that's the phenotype. But in many cases, genotype does not always equal phenotype, because even though we might have different genes present, there's also an environmental influence on whether those genes are turned on or off. And so genotype uh, might set which genes are available, but then which are actually expressed depends on the environment and the products of other genes. And of course, that's an interplay because the environment then produces the expression of some genes that then feed back with the environment and lead to different things. So our level of control looks a little bit like this. Um, your genetic makeup um, says which genes uh, and versions of those genes are available. The environment as well both have an impact on which genes are actually expressed. This leads to a different mix of proteins in the cell. And of course, those proteins doing things in the cell will change cell structure and function. Uh, as your cells have different functions, they will produce different things within the organism, which relates to the phenotype, the characteristic and traits of that organism. So genotype relates to phenotype, but also has that environmental um, influence. Uh, so a really good example of the environmental influence is around the number of blood cells you have, and this is why uh, high altitude training works. So just to step through this process, if you wanted to increase amount of oxygen that your blood can carry. Um, one way to do that is through high altitude training because when you have the changes in the external environment from high altitude of reduced oxygen in the air, that will release, uh, re lead to reduced blood oxygen level in, uh, in your body. Uh, oxygen sensing proteins will pick that up and uh, lead to the signaling uh, of growth factors that are going to increase the number of red blood cells in circulation. Um, and so that is a phenotypic change. So by having, um, in this case, this particular center advertises two weeks at 7,800 feet, um, this is going on to the point where you've got an increase in the number of blood cells so that when you go to back to regular altitude, those extra blood cells are gonna mean that you can carry around more oxygen, uh, which will increase athletic performance. So 
Delving down into actual mechanisms of that, so the environmental and chemical signals that organism receives will lead to signaling in the body um, and change gene expression. So uh, we can read through this or step through this. So um, the um, sensing of the low oxygen led to the production of growth factors. So these would circulate in the blood and be picked up by receptor proteins on the cell surface, leading to a secondary signaling within the cell. And then this is in the nucleus. So these signals will actually perhaps bind to the upstream parts of a gene and form uh, and cause the production of expression of mRNAs and proteins. And those proteins will then have functions within the cell. In this case, uh, the binding would be happening on the cells that produce red blood cells, increasing their growth in cell division in order to produce more red blood cells. But the way they do that is by changing gene expression getting that gene to be the one that's being expressed in high numbers. Um, as well as changing the functions within cells, uh, if you change the whole pattern of proteins that are being produced, you can change uh, differentiation in the type of cell. So here we look at three different types of cell within a person. Um, there are four different genes that we might be turning on. All of them have to do glycolysis, so they've all got that gene on, and then these other ones have specialist genes turned on. And none of them have haemoglobin because that's required in your red blood cells. So which genes are turned on depends on the type of cell, but perhaps the other way is that which genes are turns on, turned on determines the type of cell that a cell becomes. So uh, this is a really important part of a development and differentiation. So we all start as a totipotent embryonic stem cell. A zygote can become any type of cell. Um, these differentiate into um, these particular cell lines that can then differentiate further and differentiate and specialise to become all of the different cell types that we have in the body. Here's some additional videos on that. Key take home is that uh, environmental factors and other uh, conditions within the body will determine which genes are turned on and off. That changes cell structure and function leading to differentiation and the phenotype of the organism.